Hey guys, Michael Level here, and I'm excited to continue our series on Heavenly Hosts and the angelic realm, how to partner with the angelic realm, how to partner with the unseen. Um, last time we talked about the unseen realm and how it's exactly that. It's a realm, it's a dimension. It is not, uh, it's not in the framework of our thinking of time and space. It's not measurable. It's limitless. It's a spirit realm that's within God, in Christ Jesus, and you and I have been seated there. We've been placed there, which is so amazing. So, uh, moving on, building upon that, learning to partner with the angelic, a big part of it is to begin to learn how to see the unseen. If that's where you and I have been placed, we've been placed in heavenly places, we're in that dimension, we're in that realm, we can bind and loose things in heaven, here on earth, we need to learn how to see the unseen. We need to learn this. We have to learn because uh, it, it, that's how we begin to cooperate and participate with the angelic. That's how we begin to participate with the Spirit of God. And that's how we begin to govern and rule from the unseen uh, to here on earth. And that's what we're called to do. You and I, we're called to be governing people, uh, governing from the unseen realm uh, on the earth. So let's look at this. How do we begin to see the unseen? How do we begin to grow our senses to discern the unseen, which are angels, and angels are unseen beings. 2 Kings 6, 15 through 17, I'm not going to read it all, but you can read it later if you'd like, but I'm just going to kind of reference the story. It's the story of Elisha and his servant, and the eyes of uh, his servant being opened to see and to behold the unseen. If you remember the story, uh, the servant wakes up one morning and there's a massive evil army surrounding the entire city and they're there to kill Elisha. They want to take him out. And the servant's flipping out. He's like, dude, master, like, bro, like, we're in trouble. Like, they're here. They're surrounding us. They're going to kill us. Like, this is not good news. And Elisha, he's super chill and just, like, relaxed about it. He's like, no, bro, like, there's more for us than are against us. And his servant's like, what are you talking about, bro? Like... Uh, two against thousands. I don't think this is going to work out, man. Um, and then Elisha just, he's like, no, like, all right, let me pray for you. God opened his eyes that he could see. And then suddenly his servant's eyes open and he sees a massive host of angels, an angel army far greater than the enemy army surrounding them. And the amazing story is that the God strikes, probably through the angels, strikes that entire army blind. I don't think literally blind, but blind to Elisha. And they ride on down into the city. And it's hilarious. They come up to Elisha and they're like, hey, have you seen Elisha? And Elisha's like, yeah, I'll take you to him. And he takes him and leads him to a whole other city, an enemy city. It's, it's a really cool story of the might of God, but it's a story of the unseen realm. And I want you to see this. See, if it was legal in the Old Testament... For a servant of a prophet, prophet's eyes to be open to see the unseen realm, how much more so is it legal today? You're in Christ. You're seated in the heavenly places. You have a far greater and superior covenant in Christ Jesus now. And if it was legal to pray then, God opened my eyes that I could see the unseen. It's legal today. God wants to open your eyes to see the unseen. He wants us to see and to discern the spirit realm, to cooperate and partner with angels, to cooperate with the unseen realm. So just because you don't see something doesn't mean that it isn't there. Doesn't mean that it isn't real. This is the classic uh, truth of faith. Faith sees the unseen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So we don't see it. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Angels are always working on our behalf. I want to tell you that. Angels are always working on our behalf. Whether you believe in angels or not, uh, they're always there. And there are angels on assignment over your life. And you can choose not to believe in it or not. You can choose to just totally deny it. But uh, they'll still be there assisting and working. And uh, they'll, they'll just be there. They'll be there releasing, imparting, speaking over you, protecting you, battling in the unseen realm. And uh, that's just reality. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. But God wants us to see. Prophet Bob Jones said this. He said, many angels are inactive on the earth because we don't believe in them and we never call on their assistance. That's crazy. So God wants to open our eyes in the spirit to see and to hear the angelic, to have our senses trained to discern the spirit realm. Uh, an example of partnering with the unseen realm, I'm gonna share a quick story here, is I remember this one day, it was a couple months ago, 
uh, I had an angelic encounter. And I'm laying in my bed it's, and I suddenly am poked awake by an angel. An angel pokes my side at 2 a.m. and I'm exhausted, I'm tired, so I wake up all drowsy and I uh, run to my bathroom, use the bathroom, and honestly, I just climb back in bed. I'm like, I'm gonna keep sleeping. But then suddenly I he feel the angel physically poke me three more times, poke, poke, poke. <laughs> so I knew, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I gotta get up. So I got up, I went to my living room, turned on the lamp, Sat, I sat on the couch and I said, here I am, Lord, like, here I am. What do you, what do you want to show me? What do you want to speak to me? And this angel that woke me up, then through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit led me to Revelation, Zechariah, and Daniel. And in Revelation 1, and then verse 12, and then Revelation 4, verse 1, this is what it says, Revelation 1, 10, and 12. I was in the Spirit. This is John, the Revelator, speaking. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Revelation 4, 1 says this, after these things, what? After that encounter, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. That's crazy. So take note of that. So John heard, then he saw, then he beheld. Jump over to then the Holy Spirit led me to Zechariah 1.9. It says this, Then I said, My Lord, what are these? And the angel who was speaking with me said to me, I will show you what these are. And then moving on to Daniel, Daniel 7.7 7 says this, and this is a lot of Daniel. Daniel, this happened a lot frequently in Daniel's life. After this, I kept looking. In the night visions and behold wow so this is really powerful these passages here uh john the revelator zachariah and daniel this shows me what it's like to learn to expand uh your ability to discern the unseen realm through these three guys in these three passages it teaches us about growing in our communication with god see john was in the realm of the spirit he was in the spirit realm and he heard then he saw, then he beheld. It's the same for us. God wants to teach us to move on from hearing to seeing to beholding. Zechariah was one who was poked away, awake by an angel. He literally was poked awake by an angel. And, and, and the angel's like, hey, what do you see? And over and over again, we see Zechariah saying this. Uh, what is it? What is this, my Lord? What is it? What am I looking at? What am I seeing? So he's asking questions. And then Daniel was one who kept looking in the spirit and then he beheld. So again, in the spirit, we have the ability to see, to hear, then to see, then to actually behold. A part of learning how to discern what we hear, see, and behold in the unseen realm is to ask questions, to be like Zechariah. Zechariah was one who has this angel speaking with him, communing with him, and over and over again, he doesn't just assume that he, to know what it is that he's looking at. And he says, what am I looking at? What is this? And that's a powerful way to, to grow your senses from hearing, seeing, to beholding. Ask questions. Ask the Lord questions. Ask the angels questions. That's normal. That's what Zechariah did. So it's normal to talk to angels. That's what it shows me here too. It's normal to talk to angels. It's normal to be in the spirit. It's normal to hear the voice of God. It's normal to see the unseen. It's normal to behold the throne room. And it's, it's normal, but the prophetic is normal. It's common. Um, so God wants to teach us and also to be like Daniel, keep looking. Look, when you hear something, I know that you've heard the voice of God. You're watching this and I wanna instill a confidence in you that you have heard the voice of God because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you are a believer, that means you heard the voice of God at one point and it produced a faith in you to believe. So God wants to train, every believer has had that realm of hearing. God wants to train every believer to move from hearing to the seeing realm and then the seeing realm to the literal beholding realm. This is where uh, Zechariah, Daniel, and John were literally caught up and physically saw. So there's this, an element of seeing in the spirit where you see visions or you see uh, in the unseen realm with your imagination. But God wants to move us even from seeing visions and dreams to beholding, literally, literally beholding. So how do we do that again? Be like Zachariah, uh, or Zachariah, ask questions, be like Daniel, keep looking at a scripture. If there's a scripture that pops out to you, keep looking. 
If there's a vision you have, keep looking. If there's a dream you have, keep looking. Lean into it. Ask the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, what it is. And angels are on assignment and they're working. The question is, have you learned to partner with their assistance? God wants to teach you to cooperate with the angels. He wants to teach us to cooperate with the angels. He wants to teach us to move in the unseen realm because these angels have assignment from the Father over personal lives, over cities, over churches, over regions, over nations. So when you and I get clued into the angelic activity of heaven, we get clued into the current happenings, plans, and purposes of God on the earth. We get a peer in. When we have an interaction with an angel, we're getting an interaction of a decree from the council room of God. So, man, that's just encouraging. It's so crucial for us to get this. God wants to teach us this. So Matthew 18, 10 says this, guys. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. This is Jesus talking. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. That's powerful. Angels see the face of God. They see in the unseen realm. They are in the heavenly realm, co-laboring with God unhindered. They are single-minded and single-focused. They see his face clearly and fully, and they move to his bidding, and their number one desire is to do the will of God. So we are in this earthly realm, you and me. I don't know if you've looked around, but you and I are in this earthly realm. And right now, the Bible says we see in part and we prophesy in part. So sometimes we struggle to obey. We see through a glass dimly. We struggle to obey, you and me. We, we don't always do fully the will of God. We don't always do what we're supposed to be doing. And I don't know about you, in this battle and in this walk of following Jesus and being a disciple of Jesus, I want help from beings, spiritual beings, that see clearly and obey fully. These are the angels. Man, I want that cooperation. Hebrews 1.14 says this, guys. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So number one, this shows me angels are spirits. Again, they operate in the spirit realm. Angels are spirits. They are created beings and they are spirit beings. They live in the unseen realm. As spirits, they can weave in and out of our dimension of of time and space at any any time they want to and into any space they want to. As spirits, they are sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation. Because again, it says they are ministering spirits assigned to the church. So angels are very active in our world, but those who are privileged to discern, partner, and receive their aid are those who inherit salvation. Angels assist us in our purpose and mission in Christ and their assignment is specifically to the bride of Christ, servants assisting the bride in her purpose on the earth. Super crucial to learn how to partner with the angels and to farther learn about the heavenly hosts is to learn the unseen realm.